your rock station, 99.7 The Blitz, hanging out backstage at Sonic Temple 2023. It's Bodie, and look who's stopping by the Blitz Sonic Studio now, Johnny Christ from A7X. How's it going, man? It's going good, man. Thanks for having me over it's here. It's so good to have you guys back again. Yeah, we were God. just talking about that on the walk over. Right. Here. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty crazy after so long to, to be back and just have everybody's arms wide open for us. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible and very flattering. Life is But a Dream, your new album drops on June 2nd. Hard to believe it's been seven years already. Has it been seven years? Jeez. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean... Yeah, I guess guys. that's right. Stage was 2016. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So was this album, because it's been seven years, um, was it easy to put together? Was it a pain in the ass to put together? Um, I mean, I think it, every album that we go into have their challenges, right? Um, and those challenges come from within. We want to challenge ourselves or, at our crafts and try to accomplish things that hopefully no one else has tried to accomplish before and uh, try to do that to our best ability. We do that on pretty much every record. I mean, literally every record. Um, so when it comes to time to do this record, it felt very much like any other time. You know, new challenges, of course, and we wanted to accomplish things that we haven't accomplished before, as I just said, and not to keep beating the dead horse there. But, I mean, as far as the overall feel of it, it, it was very much like we got off the road from the stage cycle and we started writing. It took about a year, maybe a little longer than a year for the writing. And just when we were ready to, to uh, book the studio time to, to actually just start recording it, you know, the pandemic hit and mm -hmm. put a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, restraints on what we could do. And instead we said, fuck it, we're just going to chill back and wait until uh, we could do everything right the way that we want to. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was... It ended up being a silver lining, to be honest, for a lot of us uh, on, on our personal ends, because we all have young families and stuff we're able to be home with for an extended period of time, taking the kids to school and, and sports and everything, which is really cool. Probably wouldn't have had a had chance to do that. And the other one is, you know, it gave us time to really concentrate on the record sonically after we had already finished it, finished the writing of it, and maybe go back a couple times over and really, like, go, okay, well, we were going to do these interludes and maybe we're not going to do those anymore. Let's, let's trim the fat on everything and make this the best possible journey of music that we can pr possibly put together for everybody. Did you guys ever at any point, I mean, you kind of alluded to it a little bit ago, um, did you feel any pressure whatsoever, you know, to get this album out? Because I, I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but I heard the album's actually been done for like maybe a year or two at this point. Was there any pressure to get this thing out? Because some bands, you know, they feel like they have to put something out about every two or three years so that people won't forget them. Did you guys <laughs> feel any of that? I mean, obviously you have a brand already. Well, yeah, no, I laugh because it's like, it's the only pressure we've ever felt in our career has come from ourselves. We've, we've been very conscious about that, that you I mean, you'll hear things, but it doesn't, just because you hear it doesn't mean that you feel the pressure from it. Right. Um, for, for us, it's just, it was, it wasn't a year. It wasn't, it hasn't been done for a year. It's been done for a minute, but that was just, just like anything else. You, you figure out a campaign. We take each step. Your first step is writing it, then recording it, then mixing it, then mastering it. Then coming up with a concept for campaigns, music videos, that nature. So we wrapped up the mix of it and mastering back in September, I want to say. So it wasn't it wasn't like we were sitting on it yeah. for very long. We had been sitting on the songs in the sense we wrote them in like 2019, 2020. Okay. Um, but yeah, we weren't just sitting on them. We we thought about doing that a couple of times because yeah. everyone yeah. was like, "Where are they doing? You guys posting everything but new music." We're like, "It's coming, man!" Like I don't know what to tell you. Like <laughs> patience, it's yeah. coming. It's on the way, man. Chill. It's it was fun. Way. It was that was that was just like a little fun thing for us, like because it got to a point where like it didn't matter what we posted. All the comments were like, "Where's the new record?" It was, "Where's the new record?" Mixed in with "Win Brazil, Win," and that that always happens too. So it was like. All right, there's there's a little too much of what, when's the new album coming out. So we we joke to each other we're like we should just put it in the vault yeah. and just not not let anyone have it. Oh yeah. God! <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're not really gonna do that. Right, right. It, it, it was talked about as a, you know in a joking matter in the camp for sure. 
Uh, and that would have been torturous for us because we're already going, oh, my God, when's this thing coming out? You know, so uh, thank you for <laughs> June 2nd. It will June be 2nd, out. Life yeah. is but a dream is the name of it. Johnny's hanging out with us from A7X on the Blitz right at the moment. We're backstage at Sonic Temple 2023. How does it feel to be getting back into the groove and playing these types of shows? Man, it feels great. Um, this is only our third show back mm -hmm. uh, since, since uh, five years hiatus yep. for us. Um, we did a little underplay in Las Vegas, which was awesome. It got our, got our uh, sea legs wet yeah. a little bit, you know, got, got our sea legs back, rather. Um, you know, and it was it was rad. It was 3,000 people, small stage, very intimate. Um, a lot of friends and family were there to support us on our first time back. You never know how you're going to feel, right? Yeah. That, for that long, that's the longest I've gone without being on stage uh, for, of any kind. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was it was a little surreal, and you the whole time you're like, you wake up that morning super excited, but then you're still having the. Is this really going to happen? Yeah. Is this really going to happen? You have. I've been a stay-at-home dad for for the last five years for, yeah. for all intents and purposes. Uh, so, and then you wonder if you're going to be able to, if it's going to feel the same. And I'll tell you what, it was. I don't. Th I don't. I won't say it feel the same because I'm. I'm a different person in so many ways. But it was like finding an old friend or an old flame, an old girlfriend again, and and just like grabbing her and just being like yep this is this is how it's supposed to be you exactly know? we're home <laughs> we're home this is where we belong man yeah absolutely and then last week we did uh welcome to rockville yep uh bigger stage and and that just that felt even better to me just being able to i love the intimate stuff but like being able to run around an actual stage and mm -hmm. stuff again and like just feel the energy of a yeah. crowd that size is yeah. just i'm a i'm a more the merrier kind of guy yeah yeah, let's get after it. Let's let's get thousands let's have, let's on have thousands. Some fun. Yeah, let's have some fun. amen. Now you guys worked with the same producer on this album as you had previously, right? Yeah. And he's also worked. Um, let's see, with Slipknot and Tool, if memory serves right. me right. Does he have a hard time keeping you guys in line? I mean, you know, because sometimes <laughs> I'll hear that you know some producers, for better or for worse, you know, some of them they're ball breakers and they're like, you guys, pump the brakes here a little bit. Yeah, no, that's not how Joe Barizzi works. I don't, I, I don't think he's. Yeah. He's uh, at least with us. I, 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 I'm not in the room when he's in the guy in there with Tool and Slipknot. But for us, we just the reason why we brought him on for the next the, this last this last record, uh, Life Is But a Dream, as well, is he just works. He collaborates with us on everything, and you know he, he he's he'll give you no BS. If if, if something sucks, he's gonna let you know. You got to work on it, you know. But. Um, He's also there as just a great sonic engineer. He could get any tones. He, you try to imagine these tones, and you sit there, and he'll he'll sit there with you for hours trying to get that tone right. I mean, and a lot of a lot of producers will just walk away from that and like let you let you scramble a little bit yourself and yeah. kind of go, oh, well, this sounds pretty good. We should go with this. And it's like, no, it's still not right. I mean, he go to you go to his studio in Pasadena. It's just a hodgepodge of all these electronic pedals and effects from that he's gotten over the years since like the late seventies. We used a lot of that because we wanted that we we wanted it to sound like a, a new record, but still have that human that 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 warmth of the old effects from the seventies and eighties a lot too, old synths and moogs and stuff, mm -hmm. and then. Um, so you wanted to experiment a little bit. Oh, we experimented a lot on cool. the sonically on this record. Um, everything from. I mean, literally everything. Uh, and then we're matching a lot of the tones and stuff live, which has been really fun. We've been rehearsing for the last couple of months, getting everything to sound as close to the record as we can, which we've never been able to do before. I usually just get, like, my bass to sound. It's awesome. It's just, like, one good tone, and yeah. we'll just go with it. And yeah. It's like, no, like, with these new fractals and, and everything, you can have it switch into different parts and go completely different tones from the same bass and stuff. And so yeah. it's a lot of fun for us too. I think that's the I think that's the overarching thing right now. With being back, it just it just feels fun. Well, I can't wait to see you guys play live again. Avenge Sevenfold is headlining day number two of Sonic Temple 2023. We're so glad to have you guys back, Johnny. I, I just just melt our freaking faces here <laughs> later tonight, man. It's going to be a wait. lot of fun. We're going to bring it for sure. <laughs> Life is but a dream. Their brand new album drops on June 2nd. I can't wait to hear the whole thing, man. All right, man. Thank you. Thanks again for your yeah, time, yeah. brother. I appreciate it, man. Cheers.